Hi my loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jess from Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're gonna to be talking about what I feel is one of the creepiest cards within the entire deck. Now my choice of card is probably gonna blow your mind a little bit, but you have to keep in mind that I don't work with superficial meanings. I don't work with what the rest of the world says. I do my own study and research of the tarot. I own and run at the Sacred Circle Tarot School and with their, in that group, Group, we dive into the meaning and the sim symbolism of the tarot cards, each of them, especially the major arcana. And for that, it's more than just the superficial layer that most people and most books write about within the tarot. It dives into it. And my personal belief and from my experience, I feel and I've seen that the ancients and um, the, the spiritual leaders and many of the common theologies and major theologies of this world are are ripe, have hidden a lot of their symbolism in the tarot. And in w one of the things that I teach within the sacred circle is the fact that um, at one point in history or multiple times in history, certain belief systems and certain um, uh, uh, pockets of knowledge had to be hidden away from the public because they were being demonized or whatever the case may be. It wasn't something that people were encouraged to have. So for those leaders, for those theology leaders, and for those um, wise elders, they had to find a way to hide their symbols in common and plain sight and make it so that it wasn't something so intimidating so that it wasn't targeted because not only would their belief system be at risk, but their lives would be at risk. And that's when the tarot showed itself and revealed itself in playing cards. Because you could have many symbolism, many uh, symbols hidden in a card that looks benign, but in reality, that card is ripe and rich with symbols that not that that could be interpreted no matter what your language no matter what language you no matter what language you spoke and there were so many different communities and so many different languages and cultures during that time that they and a lot of similarities between the two of them that using those symbols was a way for people to connect and to exchange information especially the great spiritual leaders of that time so that was one of the the, the gifts of the tarot is that it was hidden in plain sight as just playing cards. In reality, what it was was information packed within those cards that was being flipped in order to give answers and to connect people to the divine and to um, channel that information and bring it here to earth and then also to convey that message over to whoever it was that was asking. So, and a lot of the time I'm gonna say gypsies, um, oh my gosh, two little birds. Three little birds are sitting on my window. Hi, guys. What a little blessing. Oh, I'm going to put seeds in the window now. I thought that was so amazing. Anyways, I'm sorry. Okay, so moving forward, I'm going to do my best to ignore those little birds. I just thought that was the cutest thing ever. But when I say that it's one of the creepiest cards within the deck, I'm not saying in any way, shape, or form that I'm afraid of it. But that's not at all the case. I personally do not think that the tarot is anything to be afraid of. If anything, it's something to study and to research because it's so amazing. It, it connects to Christianity and all different types of religions. So, and th those symbols are really rich within the deck. But that being said, let's go ahead and dive into the Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fortune, in my belief, is creepy AF. <laughs> Not that I say that I'm scared of it. When I say it's creepy, it's it's um, one of those cards that I'm like, you want to keep your eyes out for it. And the more that you do research on it, the more that you sit with it and connect with it, the more that you'll see the symbolism behind it is really, really profound. And in all honesty, I I have seen and I feel as though this is one of those cards that connects to the end times in reality, and I'll explain why. So the Wheel of Fortune card is on surface level. If you go to any tarot book in Barnes & Noble or pull it off of Amazon, most, most likely you will see that people only mentioning the fact that this card is connected to luck and changing circumstances, and maybe some dive a little deeper into the idea of karma. 
And that is so true. If you look into the card symbolism, it's not only connected to those things of luck and changing circumstances because it is a wheel that is always moving, but it is absolutely 100% connected to karma. I'm not going to dive into the meaning of this card too much because that would be a disservice to my... Uh, students within the Sacred Circle Tarot School, a lot of the information that I share with them is something not only sacred, but we just dive into it so deeply. And I just told myself that I wouldn't take education to YouTube world, that if you did want to learn with me, that it would be something that you would sign up for, simply because there are people who really do want that one-on-one -on -one mentorship, and that's what it is that I provide. But that being said, not only does the Wheel of Fortune connect to karma, but when I look at this card, I instantly think about the natal node, which in astrology is the point of karma. And, um, and also, the wheel of astrology, the wheel itself is astrology, the astrological wheel, the natal chart. So astrologers, myself, and other astrologers out there, we pull a wheel in order to see where the, the planets are currently moving within the chart and how they impact us here down on Earth. And karma is something that is destined to happen. It's a point in time and history that things are divinely aligned and things come in with perfect, perfect timing. And that's what it is that we're looking at when we look at the astrology charts. People have pulled astrology charts since the beginning of time to try and figure out the end of time by looking to see when certain um, planets or when certain signs are being aligned or aspected in, in specific ways. And then that's when we say, okay, this is a time where this is most likely the end of the world or when we're going to see a shift in humanity and consciousness. That in itself is ripe within this tarot card with the wheel in the center of the card showing again the connection to astrology. Now that's not what's creepy. What's creepy is the fact that we've got these four symbols in each corner of the card. Now when you are looking and studying the tarot, you have to look at the meaning and you have to look at everything. There is no nothing in the tarot on the, in the image of the tarot deck that doesn't stand for something and doesn't mean for something. Don't ignore the signs that are in the tarot because everything, I'm not kidding, is there for a very specific reason, from the numbers to the colors to the actual imagery. Now, let me go and take a step back, starting with numbers. Numbers are everything. Numerology is everything. Every single card within the entire tarot deck is in alignment with the perfect number to represent the perfect energy connected to that perfect element. Not kidding. So this card in particular is a part of the major arcana showing major themes within our lives. And it is ruled by the number 10. The card before that is the number 9, which is actual completion. Number 10 is 1 and 0 combined together. So it's not actually the ending. It's the ending that comes with a new beginning, which means that something, a cycle, a, something is new being born from the end. The card before this is the Hermit card, which is the card who goes into, has his cloak over his head and goes into like a hibernation mode in order to seek and understand and to gain knowledge. That's huge, but that's something that I will leave just for the Sacred Circle Tarot School. Um, but the card before it is the number nine, the Hermit, the card that seeks to know, to understand, to find uh, information and also enlightenment. 10 is the, the, the card that opens up into the double digits within the major arcana. So we went from being single, the single numbers, to now double digits. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and so on and so on. So that in itself is also significant because it shows, again, there's an, a change and a shift in the energy, a change and a shift in the, in the dynamic from the beginning stages to now the middle, and then we're moving towards the end, the end of the cycle. Cycle. Cycle is a huge word because that is what this card is connected to. Cycles. The, the changing circumstances. Karma. Things are constantly changing, constantly evolving. Most people... When they study the tarot and they look at the, the Wheel of Fortune, they say, oh, it's a positive change in events. It's a positive cycle. The Wheel of Fortune is upright, which shows that everything that comes from this is going to be positive and feel good. That is simply not the case. That is very superficial. It's very naive to say that. And it's okay. This is a sacred space so we can have this honest conversation. I say time and time again that when you're looking and when you're working with the cards and when you're studying and working your reading, beginner to maybe even intermediate 
uh, uh, readers will look at the Wheel of Fortune card and see it standing there by itself and say, okay, the situation is changing for the better. You can't make that assessment. In all honesty, you simply cannot make that assessment. You have to look at all the other cards that are surrounding it. No card is an island. So you want to look to see what is ahead for the future. What are the cards showing is ahead for the future? Does it look positive or does it look negative? Because simply what the card is saying, the Wheel of Fortune card is saying, is that nothing is ever still. Everything is always changing. And also things are completely outside of our control. Again, it connects you to the to astrology, that those planets planets are always moving and those that's something that we cannot control we just have to vibe with it all we know and all we can rely on is the fact that we can that is that we can uh, predict that things are changing the energy is changing that's what the wheel of fortune card is saying it does not promise like a lot of books say it does not promise that we're moving into a positive cycle it's saying that the energy has shifted and is shifting now for 50% of the time, yes, it is positive, especially if you see really nice positive cards showing up that are like really feel good. For example, the world card with the four of wands or the ace of cups or the ace of wands or whatever the case may be or three of pentacles, things like that surrounding this card suggest that yes, these the, the environment is totally changing for the better, especially something like 10 of swords in the passing position and six of swords in the up, upcoming, showing that yo, we hit the, the, the rock bottom and now finally we're moving forward into a more positive time, stay strong, stay steady. So the Wheel of Fortune, although the name is Fortune, does not actually suggest and isn't clearly sta stating that you're going to enter into a space of positive luck. And I want all beginner and intermediate and even advanced readers to revisit that. It doesn't matter how long you've been studying the tarot. If you've, if you've been studying it for 20 years and you're only studying the same thing, which is inaccurate information, as far as I'm concerned, you're just as, at, you're, you're still at the beginning level because you're in a space of naive. You're not, you're not aware that there's more to that card than what meets the surface. Now, that opens me up to attack for people to be like, well, Jess, the card is open to interpretation. Yes, but it's interpretation with some type of guidelines. You can't look at the Wheel of Fortune. At, I mean, you technically can, but to each their own. But for the most part, you can't look at the Wheel of Fortune and be like, oh, this shows that you're going to hit the lottery and win. That's not the case. You're going to get more tarot readings that are inaccurate because your clients are going to go gamble and not win not even $10. Why is that? Because it's saying it's not saying that you're going to be lucky. It's not saying that you need, you're going to hit the jackpot and win. I've seen that written in tarot books. People saying, you know, this is the meaning of that card. And people wonder why the, the tarot is inaccurate or why that didn't come to fruition because that's not, that's simply not the case. If you do the study of the tarot, you will see what this card is trying to tell you. That being said, let me go ahead and slow my roll because I want you guys to absorb this information. That being said, as we move forward, I want you to keep your mind open and I don't want anybody to have, I don't want this video to trigger fear or anxiety or anything like that because I hesitated on making this video because I don't want to freak anybody out. That's the last thing that I want to do. The other thing that I don't want to do is I don't want to challenge anyone's belief systems if they're not ready to have their belief systems challenged. So with that being said, just realize that again, I said I spent 14 minutes or 13 minutes talking about what I just said in order to prepare for to talk in order for me to prepare you guys for what I'm going to talk about when I'm talking about the symbolism, which is the symbolism is there for a, a meaning and for a reason and the history of the tarot was there for a reason and it the tarot itself is there for a reason so that being said you know don't let it completely derail you or freak you out stay open and hear me out so there's four different elements within that are hidden hidden in plain sight within this tarot card the wheel of fortune and it's this human angel here with the book it's this eagle with wings um uh, flying with the book. There's a cow or a bull right here in the corner with the book and the lion right here within the book. Now if you did a little digging, you'll see that these four symbols are shown a lot. These four animals, including the human, because humans are animals, <coughs> are shown a lot within the tarot and also um, many theologies, symbolism within many different theologies. 
Again, these symbols are man, eagle, cow, slash bull, and the lion. They represent four different ele elements and the four different signs. So the human connects to the sign of Aquarius. This um, eagle is connected to the sign of Scorpio. The bull is connected to the sign of Taurus. And the, le the lion is obviously connected to the sign of Leo. These, these symbols were specific and are shown time and time again within the Bible. And I'm going to keep referring back to the Bible because... That's where it's like symbolic for me personally. But if you do your research and if you draw the lines and come to your own conclusions, you'll see that it repeating in other theologies, major theologies. Man is considered the king of man. So man is consider considered the king of creation. This eagle is considered the king of birds, flying animals. The bull slash cow is considered the king of, of domesticated animals. And the lion is considered the king of wild beasts in general. And these things are very significant. Those four symbols are used often in Egyptian theology, in Greek theology, in Assyrian mythology, and definitely Christian mythology. The next time when you see those four symbols showing up within the tarot is when we're working with the world card, which also highlights those same four beasts. Human, eagle, flying animal, bull or cow, so domesticated animal, and the lion, the beast. Now going back to the Bible, these four, anim these four animals were highly symbolic because they connected to the four evangelists. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now these four evangelists were responsible for interpreting the gospel in their four different accounts. Matthew was connected to man, which was reason. Mark was connected to the lion, which was courage. Luke was connected to the ox or bull, which was service and sacrifice and also strength. And John was connected to the eagle, which was connected to um, seeking higher knowledge and intensity when you're, when you're in that search. Those four men were chosen for a reason because they showed the energy and the, the essence of Jesus Christ. That courage, that determination, that strength, that willpower, and also human nature, and the, the connection from God to man. And when Jesus came here on earth, he came in human form. Now, those four symbols are really important in astrology. Like I said before, man is connected to the sign of Aquarius. Uh, the eagle is connected to the sign of Scorpio. The bull is connected to Taurus, of course, and Leo, of course, is connected to the lion. All of those aspects were, again, meant to connect to the true nature of Christ. Now, those four symbols will connect again in prophecies. In fact, there was a prophet, Ezekiel, who was known for speaking um, on the destruction of, I think it was Jerusalem, and kept on seeing the prof seeing this prophecy and destruction again and again and again, and spent and dedicated his entire life to speaking on those prophecies of destruction that it was that he saw. In fact, let me take a moment to quote a, directly from the Bible what it is that he said in his prophecy, and note the connection between what it is that he says and the beast that it is that he mentions. Okay, so I have the Bible verse here, and it is a chapter, so deal with me. Bear with me here. It says, this is Ezekiel chapter 1, and I'm reading from the King James Version. So it says, starting off, Now it came to pass in the thirteenth year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captains of, captives of the river of Chabar, that the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. So this is when he has the prophecy. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down just a little bit because I want you guys to hear exactly what it is that I'm saying. But do your own research, of course, by all means. So number four, he goes, and I looked and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud. It always comes from the north, by the way. And you'll see that connection in tarot. As you study the tarot, um, messages come, well, the, the direction of where messages come from is always really, really important. But anyways, so, and I looked and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself and a brightness was about it and out of the mist, therefore, as the color of amber out of the mist of the fire. Also out of the mist, therefore, came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. And their feet, oh wait. 
and every one had four faces and every one had four wings. Four faces and four wings. Four faces and four wings. And their feet were straight feet. And the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. Burnished brass. So that's another thing too to look at is the color of the cards and the symbol symbolism of the cards. And that's something that my Sacred Circle Tarot School knows all about. Because I'm constantly talking about colors and numerology within the tarot deck. Even outside of the symbols. But moving forward. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went. They went every one straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, they had, they four had the face of a man, the face of a lion on the right side, and the, they four had the face of an ox on the left side. They had the four. They four also had the face of an eagle, man, eagle, the ox or bull or cow, call it whatever you want. And then the lion, man, <laughs> eagle, the ox in the bottom, and also the lion. Also keep in mind the number, uh, the number of this card, which we will talk about and how it directly relates, of course, to judgment, the judgment card. Are you guys seeing, are you guys picking up what I'm putting down? Now I'm gonna dive a little deeper and a little further, and I'm also gonna pull up the wheel. The Wheel of Fortune. And I'm going to keep on reading. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flat as the appearance of a flash of light lightning. Now I as as I beheld the living creatures, behold one wheel, one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces. The appearance of the wheels and their work was like unto the color of a barrel, and they four had one likeness, and their appearance and their work was at it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. When they went, they went upon their four sides, and they turned not when they went. And when, as for their rings, they were so high that they were dreadful, and their rings were full of eyes round about them four. And when the living creatures went, the wheels went by them. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Whither so wherever the spirit was to go, they went. Thither was their spirit to go, and the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels, the wheels, the wheel of fortune. Now, Ezekiel goes on to talk about his prophecy and how God came to him. That was something else that Ezekiel was known for, was God appearing to him, just in the same way that God appeared to, well, in this case, it was the archangel, but uh, how the archangel appeared to these folks down here on Judgment Day. But also keep in mind, again, the, the number symbolism. So when we move outside, when we move from the single digits into the double digits, there is a connection to every single single card to a double digit card within the major arcana. So the Wheel of Fortune is 100% connected to the Judgment card because Wheel of Fortune is, is tw twice itself and that means that it is the Judgment card. Now when we, and that's what creates the energy of the Judgment card because everything is connected. Now, when we're moving through the Sacred Circle Tarot School, I go into very strong detail of the Fool's Journey and the symbolism behind and the connection between the lower digits and the higher digits within the Major Arcana and the symbolism and, and the meaning behind it and connect that numerology and explain the numerology and why that number was chosen for that card and why that card was connected to that, to that number. And you'll see that that energy is always magnified as it goes higher into the numbers as you move forward into the major arcana because the energy is being magnified. It's being intensified. So again, as if we take some steps back, the Wheel of Fortune shows again a change in the cycle, a change in circumstances, things that are connected to karma, things that are outside of our control, things that are destined. Uh, within within the cosmos, i.e. astrology. That's something else that, again, I don't want to challenge anybody's belief systems, but when it comes to Christianity, astrology was something that is so ripe within the Bible that people 
um, they, they either ignore it or they demonize it. The other thing that was so strong within the Bible is the element of prophecy and people who prophesied and received visions from God. Those people were gifted and those people were chosen, but now in pre present day history, those same people who are receiving messages and are prophets <clears throat> and connected to God are also being demonized because they're saying that this is evil and you don't know where it is that that message is coming from. Now, if you are born on this on this earth with a gift from God, then you should be very you should be in a place where you should you could you should be able to share it, but so many people stay in the closet and don't share their gifts out of fear or whatever the case may be. That being said, the wheel of fortune again, like I said before, shows a change in times. This wheel of fortune is very specific in and um perfect in that it's the number 10. It's not number nine showing actual completion. It's 10, which shows that from an ending comes a new beginning. Now the magnified number of 10 is 20 because 10 times two is 20. And again, I'm not gonna dive into the, the, deep, the deeper symbolism of numerology within the major arcana. Either do the research yourself or sign up for the Sacred Circle Tarot School and then you'll learn and discover as we move along. But either way, just trust me when I say this, this is as, as far as I'm gonna go when it comes to going into these cards because outside of the fact that I'm still studying it on a spiritual level for myself, because it's always and always um, uh, ed always educating myself, we're always learning, we're always growing. But again, I don't wanna give too much away because a lot of what it is that I talk about with my sacred circle students is something that I, I, I emphasis on sacred. It's between us, it's between me and my group. So, and those students that have signed up. That being said, um, the Wheel of Fortune magnified is Judgment, Judgment Day. And Ezekiel was the, 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 prof, the prophet that kept on talking about the destruction, the end times when it came to Jerusalem. Now, that is when we see the Judgment card. Judgment itself does not freak me out. I don't see anything creepy about the judgment and judgment day uh, in particular because this is when God and angels and everything that has all ever taken in, into, ever come, ever taken place now comes to a head. And if you are a good person and moving from a good space and doing your best here on earth and following the rules of the earth, the positive rules of the earth and of God, then you have nothing to be worried or concerned about in my personal belief. But the judgment card again shows that all of these changes, all of these things that were karma are now karma is being dealt. And that is exactly, again, that's why I say the natal node, where it is that we're destined to go, um, astrology and the change of this, the times and the cycle that is always going. It is a wheel after all, and the judgment card finally deals that karma. It finally says, boom, this is the answer, this is the result, this is what it is, and now that you know, here's your, here's your punishment or here's your reward. So the judgment card brings all of that into light and that's why this angel is here showing itself, blaring its trumpet, the dead rise, and all of the, and the dead represents the past, it represents everything that has ever happened, that has ever been laid to rest, but is not truly completely laid to rest because it still is energy and it still impacts us here on earth now. But that trumpet is being, that horn is being blown, it's directly from God and all of it is come up to the surface. Now, why I find the Wheel of Fortune so creepy in a nutshell is because, and it's not, when I say creepy, it's because I see the symbols that are hidden again from the ancients and from the elders and the wise ones before us that hid their, their um, theologies, their theologies in symbols within the tarot card. And that's not something I'm making up. Do your own research. But the reason why I find it so creepy is because creepy is probably not the best word, but I see it as a warning. I see it as a message. I see it as some things are karmic, some things are karma. Things are out of our control in a lot of ways. Basically, what you have to do is be your best, highest, and greatest self, no matter what, operate from a place of love and light so that when Judgment Day actually comes, you're good. You have nothing to worry about because, again, karma deals itself always and forever. In fact, the next card following this is Justice. 
And that's for most major arcana. However, sometimes strength and justice are, are swapped. But the next card after this is the justice card, which su suggests that there is a weighing of uh, good and evil, um, positive and negative. It's like checks and balances, making sure that everything is fair in the eyes of the universe. It doesn't factor in your feelings. It works with fact and logic only. So that's something else that, again, the, the symbol, symbolism and the numerology and the placement of these cards is very much divine and perfect. And perfect. It's not like, oh, let's just fit the Wheel of Fortune in and the Justice card in because we need a Justice card, so let's just make it number 11, the Wheel of Fortune 10. No. There is a meaning and a, a pre procession or like a, a process that was designed and designated and it goes much deeper than just surface level. So to the person who said to me in my last video, Jess, you have nothing to be afraid of with the Wheel of Fortune. First of all, I'm not afraid of any of the cards. I've never said that I was scared of the cards. I said that it was creepy because it's, and that's not to say that I'm scared of it, not at all. There's nothing to be afraid of with the cards. It's a warning and it's a message and take it for what you will. But you can't, it's very naive to say that the Wheel of Fortune is supremely positive. You're wrong. You're wrong. The Wheel of Fortune in many cards and many texts is written as a positive change of luck, but that is not the case. It's simple to say that. And, and, it, and that's why it's being said so much is because it's a very simple explanation. But the Wheel of Fortune shows the connection and the wheel is always moving. And sometimes it ticks up and we're in an upswing in our lives and sometimes it goes down and we go dormant or we have some growth that we need to go through. But either way, it shows that nothing is consistent. The only thing that we can rely on is the fact that change is going to happen. Also, there's a connection to karma, things coming back and at some point to bite you in the ass depending on what it is, the actions that it is that you take. Um, yeah. So in this, the Wheel of Fortune card, I do dive into this a little deeper within the Sacred Circle Tarot School. Links for that are down in the description box. Take this for what you will, but as far as it being the creepiest card within the deck, I, I stand by that and I still stand by it. No, the Devil card is not creepy to me. The Devil card shows, um, you know, allowing yourself to kind of indulge and it also shows you know bonds things that it is that we have a hard time breaking ourselves away from for me it's sugar and cake whatever um so i don't find the devil card creepy at all i feel like the devil card is pretty point blank you know in your face uh the tower card is one of those cards too that people get a little freaked out by the death card all of those cards are things that i welcome but it's the message behind the wheel of fortune that says look Times are changing. We're in a different era. Things are not meant to remain the same. This is the dawning of a new energy and the fact that it's connected to the judgment that the judgment card, and I'm not scared of judgment day, again, like, hear me when I say that, but it is saying, look, that there are consequences for your actions, that's why the justice card is the next card to follow, um, and the wheel is always changing, there's things that are connected to karma, and destiny, and this cycle, this does not, this card does not promise, again, good luck, it's very naive, and juvenile, and beginner level thinking to say that this card promises positive outcomes, no, it doesn't. The surrounding cards will tell you what the card is suggesting the energy is changing. And it's up to you to either work your magic and work your intention for your the outcome that it is that you want. Or maybe just let go and let God and let the universe, the divine, take you where he, she, it wants you to be. All right? So I hope that that makes sense. Let me know your thoughts. I go ahead and welcome all of the backlash that I know I'm going to get because every time I talk about the truth and the symbolism, I get a bunch of comments from all different types of people, from all different types of belief systems that want to share and bash it or destroy it or threaten me. I'm literally not scared of you, but it is what it is. I welcome your opinion. Definitely be respectful though. If you're not respectful, you will be blocked. And on that note, I'll see you guys in my next video. I love you. Love and light. Bye.